ಓಂ ಜ್ಞಾನಧಿಮಂದ್ಞಾನಂಜನ ಶಲಾಖಾಯ ಚಕ್ಷುರುನ್ಮುಧೇನ ತಸ್ಮೈ ಶ್ರೀಗುರುವೇ ನಮಃ Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. My obeisances to all the exalted devotees here today. It's a kind of a miracle to be here. A miracle that we're all here at all. Actually, if you think about it, everything's a miracle. No one moment is the same as, uh, as another. It's all new experiences we're having all the time. And there's no... circumstance that we've ever experienced before that we're experiencing now it's always changing and there's also no uh, living entity anywhere in creation that's exactly the same as another and uh, there's not one particle in the Lord's creation that's not unique in fact someone was showing me the other day that granules of sand under microscopic observation at very high power and each grain of sand is like a little jewel I was stunned as you go deeper into a Krishna's creation and you find more and more uniqueness it's only the mind that evens out everything and says I'm bored now I'm morose there's nothing new happening <laughs> so I, I feel uh, this is a very unique experience that uh, is, has been put into play by a great souls, a pure devotees of the Lord who have come to the world, especially Srila Prabhupada, who is, of course, inspired by uh, great souls before him. But because of them, in fact, there's a theory called chaos theory that says if a butterfly flaps its wings in California, the chain reaction of each molecule touching the next can then create a hurricane in Bermuda. <laughs> But it's a fact that everything's interlinked and everything is being overseen by the Supreme Personality of God. And so the fact that we're all sitting here in a backyard somewhere in this designated area called the UK is, is, a, is the arrangement of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. especially because of the, the purpose that we're here, which is to uh, glorify Krishna and his pure devotees. So I'm extremely um, exhilarated and honored to be a part of this. And I thank you all for dedicating your lives to this process of pure devotional service and for coming here tonight, because it's not easy to get around London at all, I've noticed. It's very dangerous, actually. <laughs> First, I'm going to read you a, a very practical verse, which is poetical at the same time. And which, after hearing tonight, you'll be inspired to maintain your spiritual health in a very practical way. Does that sound okay? Because if it doesn't, there's room in the front of the house. You can go up there for a little while. and come back. This is a verse from Esri Chaitanya Charamita, Madhya Lila, chapter 25, text number 278. Jai Lila Amrita Vine Kai Jadi Anapani Tabi Bhaktira Dula Jeevana Did you all get that? Jar ek bindu pane utpalita tanumane hase gai kare nartana. Any Bengalis? No? Okay. I'll say the, the, the words, you please repeat. Jay, Jay. he who, he who. Leela. Leela of the pastimes of Lord Krishna and Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Amrita Bine, without nectar, Kai Jadi Anapane, 
if one eats only ordinary food grains, tabe, then, pakdera, of the of the devotees, dwulbal jivana, life becomes weakened, jar, of which, ek bindu pane. If one drinks one drop, upalita tanumane, the body and mind become jubilant. Hase, laughs, gaya, chants, kare nartana, dances. Translation Men become strong and stout by eating sufficient grains. But the devotees who simply eat ordinary grains, but the devotee who simply eats ordinary grains but does not taste the transcendental pastimes of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and Krishna, gradually becomes weak and falls down from the transcendental position. However, if one drinks but a drop of the nectar of Krishna's pastimes, his body and mind begin to bloom and he begins to <coughs> laugh sing and dance. Would you like to repeat it? Yeah, Say yes. 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 Men become strong and stout, Men become strong and stout by, eating sufficient grains, by eating sufficient grains but the devotee who simply eats ordinary grains but does not taste the transcendental pastimes of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and Krishna gradually becomes weak and falls down from the transcendental position. However, if one drinks but a drop of the nectar of Krishna's pastimes, his body and mind begin to bloom and he begins to laugh, sing and dance. Purport by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada. Srila Prabhupada Ki. All the devotees connected with the Krishna Consciousness Movement must read all the books that have been translated. The Chaitanya Charitamrita, Srimad Bhagavatam, Bhagavad Gita, and others. Otherwise, after some time, they will simply eat, sleep, and fall down from their position. Thus, they will miss the opportunity to attain an eternal blissful life of transcendental pleasure. Would you like to hear it again? All the devotees connected with the Krishna Consciousness Movement must read all the books that have been translated. The Chaitanya Charamrita, Srimad Bhagavatam, Bhagavad Gita, and others. Otherwise, after some time, they will simply eat, sleep, and fall down from their position. Thus, they will miss the opportunity to attain an eternal blissful life of transcendental pleasure. The Chaitanya Charitamrita, Srimad Bhagavatam, Bhagavad Gita, and others. What are the others? Sri Upanishad. What a book. Life-changing book. If you just sit on a bus and ride back and forth in the city and read Sri Upanishad, <laughs> you'll get off that bus feeling uh, like you're not of this world anymore. It's such a powerful book. Prabhupada's uh, purports illuminate this most important shastra and after all it's an uh, Unupanishad which is actually given to us to extricate us from the material world. The Vedas which Krishna says Trigunya Vishaya Veda Nistrigunya Bhavarjuna Nirdvanvo Nityasatvasto Niryoga Shema Atmavan He's not so hot on the Vedas in general it's just that they generally deal with the three modes of material nature. And when you start getting to the transcendental portion of the Vedas, you get to the Upanishads. Upanishad, it means to sit up close. It means you, you've, you've actually really had it with the, the uh, recycling of sense gratification that goes on in the material world, up and down and up and down. Uh, Krishna talks about this in the Gita also. People who perform Vedic sacrifices and then they get elevated. They're called elevationists. You try to get a better position somewhere in this material world, right? It happens in many spheres of life. Correct? Like where? 
frequent flyer miles. <laughs> Ch you try to get in the, uh, you move a little higher, and then they keep making it harder to get in, and you got to pay more money. And then once you make it there, and then you know, you get sick or you take some time off, and then you drop back down again. It's like, who are you? We don't know you anymore. Uh, it's like that everywhere in the material world. And Krishna, shinye punye martya lokam vishanti. You, you can be elevated by Vedic rituals to get to the higher planetary systems, but then you'll use up all your pious credits, you'll fall back down again. There's a whole convoluted process and how that happens also, falling down from the heavenly planets. It's actually kind of scary. Um, and so, uh, as one's going up and down and up and down in the material world, one is actually meant to see everything on the way up and see everything on the way down and then come to the conclusion that there's no way here. Krishna confirms it. You can just take his word for it in the Bhagavad Gita. He says, That at top to bottom, take my word for it. There's nothing here for you. Nothing to see, move on. And so once somebody has that conviction, there's nothing to see here. Actually, they've seen it all. Then uh, the Upanishads are available. And the Upanishads start to speak to us about the fact that we're not of this world. And that's a revelation, a great revelation. Th there, uh, Srila Prabhupada presented this Upanishad also, Sri Upanishad, because th this Sri Upanishad presents the Supreme Personality of Godhead directly and also talks about his beautiful face. And, and uh, <coughs> this gives one uh, an understanding that there's something more to life. And one sits up close to hear this information. So this uh, one book, Sri Upanishad, is very powerful. It points out that God's actually a person. And nobody gets to hear that. And that's why they're suffering in this world. Because they have no conception of uh, uh, the personality of, of the su Supreme. They have all impersonal and very vague concepts of the Supreme. But we get Sri Upanishad, and anyone who reads that book, I mean, you could dedicate your, yourself to any one of these books, like Hanumat Prasheik Swami, who's a great advocate of becoming educated, assimilating that everything that Prabhupada has given us. Who knows Hanumat Prasheik Swami? All very fortunate souls to know such a great soul, Hanumat Prasheik Swami. And for years, <coughs> he would carry a little bag around his neck, and in it, it contained the nectar of instruction. Actually, he'd read it in Spanish to make it even more challenging for himself. <laughs> His first language is English. Uh, he's like that, multi-talented. But uh, every day, he would just take that book out and read and read and read and read and assimilate what's in that one book, the nectar of instruction. This is a concise uh, rendition of uh, the, all the teachings that Rupa Goswami uh, learned from Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And what's to prevent one from carrying that book around? Anybody have one around their neck right now? What's to, what's to stop you if you decided, I, wanted to, I want to become an expert in the Nectar of Instruction or the Sri Upanishad? It's actually, uh, these are, are concise enough that you could carry them around. I wonder what you think about how long it would take to actually become an expert in the Sri Upanishad. Who would like to give an estimate? If you specialized in, who here is specialized in, in something in, in an academic career? Or a farming career? Or a vocation? Nobody? Naren, you specialize in finance. He has a P PhD in finance. And uh, he's specialized. How many years did it take you to get a PhD? Seven, eight years. That's pretty quick. As, uh, you know, he's gifted. He got a PhD seven, eight years. How long do you think it would take to get a PhD in the Sri Upanishad? Work with me now. <laughs> How many years do you think it would take? Or months, I don't know. What do you think? Lifetime. One lifetime. There, let's give him a round. A lifetime. Why do you think that? Uh, there's always something new. There's always something new. Well, that's profound. Yeah, it, it, it could take you a lifetime to become an expert. In fact, the deeper you go into the Sri Upanishad, the more you might think, well, this is 
so profound. There's always something new every time I read it. I don't think there's a time in which you would read Sri Shapanishad and you would come to the conclusion, I'm done with this book forever. I've mastered it. I'll never need to look, open it again. What to speak of the nectar of instruction? What other books are there? Because he said, Srimad Bhagavatam, Chaitanya Charitamrita, the Bhagavad Gita, and others. Now we're skipping over Srimad Bhagavatam, Chaitanya Charitamrita, Bhagavad Gita. That's a sig fairly significant omission in, in our secondary approach here, but nectar devotion. nectar devotion. Who here has taken a little time to open the pages of nectar devotion and read a few, few words here and there? How did it make you feel? Good? Can you say anything that you remember from the nectar of devotion? Anyone? Do we have an extra, uh, is the mic inspiring? Can you be more specific? Anything that you read from the nectar of devotion that stuck in your mind? Bhagavad Ashraya Prabhu. Uh, at the beginning of the 16th chapter, Srila Prabhupada talks about how so long as one of the dangers of the material world, and that so long as one has the material body, he should conduct himself as a neophyte. Now, could you live in that information for the rest of your life? Just one sta statement from the Nectar Devotions. Please say more. Pitiless intrigues of Maya. Everyone please repeat. Pitiless intrigues of Maya. And you're saying that you got all this from these books. Yes. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Nectar of devotion, and he quoted from where else? Bhagavad Gita. Thank you very much, Bhagavad Ashraya Prabhu. Just while we were, we just came from 
Italy, and there we were reading the pastimes of Maharaj Agnidra and Purvachitti. And I'm just following up on what you said about the senses being unpredictable. Maharaj Agnidra, who is an extremely exalted soul and was performing a very elevated kind of uh, yoga practice, heard the ankle bells of Purvachitti. And he opened his eyes a little wider, he saw Purvachitti, and he gave up his yoga and he left. And Prabhupada mentions in that context that the senses have a serpent-like quality, a kind of uh, poisonousness in them, that they're attracted to uh, dull matter. It, it, uh, it uh, um, presents itself in a certain way through the pitiless intrigues, in a in pitiless but intriguing way. <laughs> And then uh, the senses may go for it. But then he goes on to say, if one becomes absorbed in Krishna Bhakti and doesn't depend on mechanical kinds of restraint of the senses, then one can be impervious to these uh, temporary attractions that come uh, before our vision, be, uh, through, uh, before our senses in many different ways. And w as we were discussing those verses together, I was there at a meeting with uh, many other devotees. And in the Bhagavatam classes, we were thinking how important it is, as Prabhupada's pointing out here, to have our minds uh, fixed on the personal form of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. So, unless one has a positive taste then there's every chance that the, the senses can drag us in a, in a way that will be regrettable, that we'll regret uh, later. So nectar of devotion, the Sri Shapanishad, nectar of instruction, any other books? All of the small books, the elevation Name some of the small books from this side. What are some of the small books? What does he mean by small books? Easy journey to other planets. Chant and be happy. Beyond birth and death. What else? Perfection of yoga. Science of self-realization. So, pardon? Perfect questions, perfect answers. I was just, uh, recently I was in Connecticut and I was... Uh, uh, driving from Connecticut back to New York and was sitting in the car with Brahmatirtha Prabhu. Brahmatirtha was um, a young Peace Corps worker and he happened to be in India and he was introduced to Srila Prabhupada and he asked many important questions and it got recorded and that conversation is in that book, Perfect Questions, Perfect Answers. And he was just telling me about the circumstances of that book, uh, how he came to meet Srila Prabhupada and all the answers, all the questions and answers are extremely um, relatable and important for the world. So that's in a book. It's available to everybody. So um, here in this purport, Prabhupada's talking about the diet of the devotees. If you have a poor diet, you will end up uh, anemic and weak and spiritually. And then you'll become diverted from the path of Krishna consciousness. That's what he's saying. And I believe that. Because when I was in f fourth grade, we had a science fair, and my friend Ricky Masano <laughs> did this <laughs> experiment <laughs> where he got two, two white rats. And he kept them in t two different cages. And one rat he fed uh, extremely a nutritious food. And the other rat, he gave what he used to eat, <laughs> which was <laughs> white bread. <laughs> Ricky Mazzano was a skinny guy. And uh, after a few months, he brought these two white rats into class, and we were shocked. One of them looked like a super rat. The one that had this enhanced diet, a special grains, 
and uh, the best of fruits. And the other one, he just gave Wonder Bread. Just uh, not a very nice diet. Well, water. Water and Wonder Bread. And one was skinny and, and looked weak, and the other one looked so powerful he could take on any rat in the universe. <laughs> and after that, Ricky reformed his ways because he looked like that little skinny rat. And everyone told him, Ricky, you've got to eat something more than Wonder Bread and donuts and potato chips. And after that, he believed it because he could see it for himself. So one has to see for oneself the effect of hearing and chanting uh, properly. And you, ha you have to think of it like a diet. In fact, it's mentioned in the Bhagavatam, Bhakti Parishanu Bhavu Virakti Ranyata Traisha Trika Ekakala Prapadya Manasya Tasnatasus Tushti Pushti Shudapayonugasam compares the process of Krishna consciousness to eating. And that is, when you're hungry and you eat a good meal, you feel nourishment, satisfaction, and your hunger goes away. So in the same way, when you properly apply yourself, when one properly applies oneself to the process of Krishna consciousness, uh, one feels uh, naturally invigorated spiritually. It means one feels bhakti. There's dormant bhakti in the heart, it just comes out. Uh, and then you also, anubhava, you get direct experience. You see it for yourself. It's not theoretical, but it's, it's, you directly experience. You see Krishna within everything. And also, and this is the most amazing, you become virakta anyatra cha, which means you become uh, detached from all those things that are not related to Krishna. In other words, well, let me just ask you, have you, have you ever found the material world to be a sticky place? Let me tell you what I mean by sticky. It means that somehow or other, you've just got free from one bad habit, and the nec next minute you look over and you've developed another bad habit. They just pop up. Please say yes. yes. Just to make me feel better. <laughs> <laughs> this, this, the environment in the material world is extremely sticky. It's like mango sap. If you get mango sap in your hair, you might as well shave up because you're not, it's not coming out. It doesn't come out. So the, the, the environment in the material world is extremely sticky like that. But by the process of hearing chanting, it's a, there, it's a solvent. A solvent uh, makes a salute, which means that if you, if you uh, put the solvent in, then that thing which normally was so sticky that you'd have to cut your hair off, then it naturally dissolves that sticky part. You can get it off. Anybody at home, do you have the solvents that you use, anything? When you get, when you get a stain or something? No secrets? <laughs> like, huh? Is there a secret? How to get certain kinds of stains out? You look on the internet, you'll find there are solvents for all the different kinds of accidents you might have in your house. Like, you spill cranberry juice on your white, uh, new white carpet. What do you do? Well, don't freak out. There's an answer. There is a solvent for that. I don't know what it is, but I just know there is one. <laughs> and, and in a similar way, the stickiness, the way in which I become entangled moment to moment in the material world has a solvent, and that is the process of hearing and chanting. I was, uh, what I got out of, uh, we was there for BBT meetings in, in Italy. And we're here in classes. Jayad Wait Maharaj gave a class one morning. It's, uh, it's so nice. Prabhupada called him. Uh, he said, Jayad Wait Maharaj, he is parampara. He always speaks what he hears, just represents. And anyway, a devotee was asking a question about how to, um, I forget exactly what it was, but it was something about how to become free from bad habits. And he had some modern theory or something about how to do it. And Maharaj talked about the process of chanting Hare Krishna and hearing and chanting. And they hesitated a few minutes and he said, there's nothing new. <laughs> nothing new. So, anyat, uh, viraktir anyatatra means that by hearing and chanting, you become um, naturally detached from those things that before were sticking onto you and causing you problems uh, to your senses, diverting your mind and so forth. So, the, the conclusion of this verse, Prabhupada's very straightforward here. 
he says that you have to get on a regular diet of hearing and chanting in order to survive in Krishna consciousness. Were you going to say something, Bhagavan? I wanted to ask you, where is that verse? Which verse? The one I just read. Bhakti Parishanu Bhavi Viraktir. This is from the 11th canto. It's in the uh, discussion between Maharaj Nimi and the Nava Yogendras. Kavi Havi Antariksha Prabhuta Pipalayana Avirhotra Drumala Chamasa and Karabhajana. These are the Nava Yogendras. And each one of them gives a very particular instruction to Maharaj Nimi. Maharaj Nimi was sitting doing a fire sacrifice because he was a king and he was performing these Vedic yagyas that was as part of his duty to help bring piety to his kingdom. And then out of nowhere, the Navi Yogendras, who are nine sons out of how many that uh, Rishabhadev had? 100. 100. So there were nine and they became great sages. And they have nothing else to do but go around and do good for others. That's a good job if you can get it. So they showed up at the assembly of, of Maharaj Nimi where he was performing the sacrifice. And Maharaj Nimi stood up. All the priests stood up when these sages came. The fire stood up. <laughs> when they, they saw how exalted these sages were. And then Maharaj Nimi welcomed them. This is what you do when, when a, a saintly person comes. You welcome them. They, you sit them down. You uh, satisfy them in any way that you can. You surrender to them and you humbly su and submit and please, uh, could you help me? And you ask questions. This is what Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita is the process for getting perfect knowledge. That is, Tadvidi, Pranipatena, Upadakshanti, Yeah, he names three things that I just mentioned. So Maharaj Nimi then inquired and each one of the sages uh, answered his questions in uh, such, with such finesse, so much detail, that if you study this one section of the Bhagavatam, that is Maharaj Nimi's questions to the nine sages and their answers, you will become a, a perfectly self-realized soul. If you just study that one section of the Bhagavatam, thoroughly. If you get a PhD in that one section, is that possible that you could, that you could get a PhD in that? Say yes. That's one of those say yes, yes parts. Yeah. <laughs> people actually specialize in all kinds of things. Like sometimes people study beetles. Biologists, they study things. And they'll specialize in a particular kind of beetle. And they can write a, a thesis paper on a particular beetle. They'll actually go to the Sahara Desert and they'll observe the beetle for years. And then they'll collect data and they'll write a, th uh, a paper uh, for a PhD about a particular beetle. Now let me ask you the question again. Could you get a PhD in the, the teachings of the Navi Ogendras to Maharaj Nimi? Yes. yes. Yeah, more emphatic yes after the beetle thing, right? <laughs> yes, you can. Uh, I mean, you can, you can drill down in any place that you like. And what's to stop you from saying, now I'm going to specialize in the Navi Ogendras teachings to, to Maharaj Nimi. And if you do that, you'll be very uh, fixed in the science of Krishna consciousness because it's all um, enumerated in that section. They enumerate the, the, the entire science of Krishna consciousness in that section. So th there's, uh, this is the, uh, the mainstay of our Krishna consciousness movement. It's hearing and chanting. When Prabhupada came to America, he came with the greatest wealth, and that was a taste for hearing and chanting. This is the greatest wealth. Because if you have this, you don't need anything else. If you can get a little taste for studying the Sri Upanishad, or the Nectar of Instruction, or the Nectar of Devotion, Srimad Bhagavatam, Chaitanya Charamrita, Bhagavad Gita, or any of these other transcendental literatures, if you can get a little taste for that and feel satisfied by sitting down and, and hearing this in the association of a few friends, then all the world's problems will shrink from the size of an ocean to that the water contained with the hoof print of a calf, which you can easily step over. Do you believe me? Yes. Thank you. So 
how do you do that? And this is uh, recommended by, by all the great sages. I'll give a little more uh, scriptural evidence. Here's from the nectar of in instruction itself. Rupa Goswami says, Tanama Rupa Charitari Sukirtananu, Smrityo Kramena Rasana Manasi Niyoja, Tishtan Vraje Tananu Ragijananu Gami, Kalam Nayad Akilamityu Pedesha Saram. Here's what Rupa Goswami, who is uh, the uh, Rupa Manjari, who's uh, an assistant to the uh, gopis uh, who serve Srimati Radharani in, Vr in Vrajadam, who appears in Chaitanya's Leela, who in takes instructions from Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and then passes them on to the world through his instructions. Through whom Prabhupada says, we are receiving the perfect knowledge from Vrajadam and the path to go back to Goloka Vrindavan. He says, here's the essence of all advice. But we've run out of time. So I thank you very much for coming tonight. Hare Krishna. We won't have time to discuss it. How does that make you feel? Does it make you feel bad? Yes. Okay, that's good. So, if you said, fine, let's go eat, then I would be worried. But actually, here's what he says. He says, here's the essence. Upadesha saram. Everyone say, Upadesha saram. Upadesha saram. Yeah, Upadesha means instruction. And Sada means the cream. So he says, here it is. Here's the cream. And it's right in the middle of his uh, concise book, which is also already the cream. Now it's the cream of the cream. He says, here's the cream. He says, uh, organize your life around the principle of hearing and chanting about Krishna. And he said, just from that, you will be able to uh, leave this material world and reside in Vrajadam, in the spiritual world you'll become intimately connected with one of the associates of Krishna in the spiritual world through the process of hearing. And all you have to do is apply yourself to that. And in his purport, Srila Prabhupada goes into detail. Uh, actually, he quotes from his own spiritual master, Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur, who lists the various stages that it takes to go back to the spiritual world. And it all starts with intensive hearing from what? Which books? Srimad Bhagavatam, what else? Chaitanya Charamita. There's a pattern here, you can follow it. Go ahead. Bhagavad Gita, what else? Correct. What else? Nectar Instruction. Sri Shapanishad. Science Self Realization. Teachings of Lord Chaitanya. Excellent. Who said Teachings of Lord Chaitanya? What a book that is. We read it last year. We went to Govardhan and we, we locked ourselves in a room and we read that whole book. And we were astounded. I hadn't read it for a long time because there's a lot of books to read. You can really get caught up in getting a PhD in Maharaj Nimi and the Navi Yogendra. But if you go back and read the teachings of Lord Taitanya, you will be astounded. That's the first book that Prabhupada put out. It has everything. All the teachings are there. It, from the most basic to the most esoteric you'll ever hear in your whole life. Right? We read the whole thing. Well, it, it, it's actually like a PhD thesis. It's a PhD thesis. The on the Chaitanya Charmita. That's what it is. It's a PhD thesis on the Chaitanya Charmita. You could carry that one around and study it. Thoroughly threadbare, as Prabhupada said. So, this is the secret. One has to hear and chant. So, if someone feels at any time uh, lackluster in th their practice of Krishna consciousness. One might just remember Ricky Masano and the little white rat experiment. <laughs> and that's what this verse today we, we read. If you eat uh, good grains and you eat good food, and I see, I've noticed some people, I was sitting with Dev Amrita Swami when we were in uh, Italy, and he always eats the best. Uh, he has special diet because he travels extensively. He taxes his physical body beyond belief. The, the kind of international travel that he does, always preaching, always writing. No one knows how he does it. He's especially empowered, soul walking this earth. But he's very careful in his diet, how he eats the most highly potent kinds of uh, grains and uh, chia seeds and all kinds of superfoods that he eats so that, it, that he can be he healthy. And if one feels lackluster in one's spiritual life, 
you can now trace it back to one reason. Uh, insufficient hearing. <laughs> and if you sufficiently hear, you will feel uh, naturally enlivened. You'll also feel detached from things that used to bother you. You'll be able to uh, respond without overreacting when your spouse talks to you in the wrong tone of voice. <laughs> Someone cuts you off on the, on the, what do you call it here? It's not a freeway. Motorway. Motorway. Thank you. I have to relearn English <laughs> before I go in Sankerton. Because the first time I came here to do Sankerton, I was talking to people and they kept going, what are you talking about? I'm talking to you in English. And they go, no, I don't understand you. <laughs> it's a mo motorway? Motorway. In the car park. Not a parking lot. <laughs> and they're notes, not bills. So, I mean, it, it's a whole new language here. <laughs> I mean, it's a whole new language over there. But anyway, uh, this, is, this is the system. So here's a few practical tips. One is that you should count how much you're doing because the Goswamis counted. Sankhya Purva Kanama Gananati Bi Kalava Sani Krito. This is Srinivasacharya's point. He said about the Goswamis of Vrindavan, they were very meticulous in how they counted. And by the way, even those engaged in Raganuga, in other words, they've elevated themselves to the stage of spontaneous devotional service, they still follow very strictly externally. Uh, all the practice rules and regulations very carefully externally. What to speak of those who are just beginning, you have to follow very carefully. This is vaidi. Uh, it's a special kind of vaidi. It's the kind of vaidi that leads to raganuga because it stimulates that kind of love within the heart, the kind of hearing and chanting that we do. So if you regulate it the way you would do uh, when you're getting ready for um, what? Some kind of heavy test. What kind of thing, tests have you taken? physical or mental test that you got ready for in your life? What? Driving test, yeah. <laughs> you, you got, you, did you have a discipline to get ready for that? Yeah, and you were very strict about it because you needed to get a license, right? Yeah, any other disciplines you followed? Bhakti Shastri test. That's something that you apply yourself to very carefully. Any sporting thing or musicians? You, know, you have to be very careful. You have to follow the, the, what the teacher says. You have to practice every day in order to do that. So, uh, in the same way, if you uh, uh, count how much you chant, hear and chant every day, you'll, you'll then uh, make sure that you're getting the proper diet. Because it's easy to cheat on your diet. People do it all the time. They join organizations like Weight Watchers to lose weight. And then, in the middle of the night, they wake up and start stuffing donuts. <laughs> and everyone's going, how long have you been at Weight Watchers? Two years. And they're like, Did you, how come you haven't lost any weight? I don't know. The program doesn't work. <laughs> no, it does work, but you have to follow it. They're very meticulous. They make you get on a scale and write down your number, how much you did, and so forth. So in the same way, if you follow very carefully a, a, a regimented system of hearing and chanting, then you'll, f you'll feel for yourself that you're becoming strong in Krishna consciousness. Now, here's a way to count. Um, here's a card that you can have. And this is called Be a Sage, page by page. And on this card, you'll find a grid on the grid, there's a list of all the Srila Prabhupada's books on this side that we all just named. And then a, across the top, there's a list of time periods. Uh, one month, three months, six months, nine months, one year, two years, three years, four years, five years. Now, <coughs> on the, on the f far right side, you'll see a grid that says total pages. And so, if you would like to know how to finish any one of the books that are listed here within a particular p time period, you can just triangulate and find out the number. So, who here would like to finish the entire Bhagavad Gita in two years? 
Start the Bhagavad Gita and finish it in two years. Raise your hand if you'd like to do that. Why not? Okay. Bhagavad Gita Prabhu, you can read one page a day of the Bhagavad Gita. And you will finish it in two years. Now, Bhagavad Gita Prabhu will be two years older in two years anyway. But if he reads one page of the Bhagavad Gita every day, then he'll have finished the Bhagavad Gita in two years. If, on the other hand, you take the same time that you would read one page of Bhagavad Gita and you apply it to Facebook, how much time can one spend on Facebook? Approximately how much time? Unlimited, whole day, right? But if you invested just a portion of Facebook time on reading one page of Bhagavad Gita and you did it every day for two years, you'd finish the whole Bhagavad Gita. Let's move it up a little bit. How about if you wanted to read the whole Bhagavad Gita in three months? Is that good? Yeah. Sridham says good. How many pages? Eight, eight, pages? eight pages a day. I think that's a small investment, isn't it? Eight pages of Bhagavad Gita a day. And if you're, you're the person in your home, your ashram, that reads eight pages of Bhagavad Gita, your neighbors are going to take notice. They're going to say, what's she doing over there? She's reading eight pages. She reads eight pages of Bhagavad Gita a day without fails. You're kidding me. She does that? That's amazing. We should go over there and check it out. You'll start a whole revolution. That's how Prabhupada started the Christian conscious movement. He just went to New York City, the biggest city on earth, with no money and no connections, and he just sat down and started reading Bhagavad Gita, practically by himself. And he put up a little sign that said, I'm reading Bhagavad Gita, stop by if you like. And people started coming in. They get, he reads Bhagavad Gita three times a week. And they come in and they sit down and they listen. And what happened? We're all here. It's magic. If you read eight pages of Bhagavad Gita every day without fail, you, you'll change not just your own life, but the entire world. That's how you start your own Krishna consciousness movement within the movement, is decide to do that. Now how about the Bhagavatam? How about you want to read the whole Srimad Bhagavatam, all 12 cantos? Raise your hand if you'd like to do that. Okay, now, how, how many of you would like to do it within five years? That's reasonable, isn't it? Nine pages, that's all you have to do. For the low, low price of nine pages a day, we're going to get you into a 12 cantos of the Shaman Bhagavatam. And if you want to step it up, you can just look at the chart and measure it for yourself. If you do 41 pages a day, that's, that's a very... Um, powerful vrut to take, but some people have taken it, and they'll, they'll do it without fail, 41 pages a day, come rain or shine. They finished the whole 12 cantos in 12 years. So this little card will help you make, make an assignment for yourself and decide uh, on the scale of what you can afford to invest every day and start uh, reading any one of the particular books, or you can read three at a time. And what I recommend is uh, you can go to these office supply stores, and they have these little plastic flags. Are you familiar with these? Accountants or anybody? You just pull them out and they stick right on the page. You could stick them 100, 200, 300 times over and over again, and just keep moving them. So what I like to do is I put one of those, uh, I pick how many pages I'm going to read, and then with a Sharpie, I'll write, write on the flag, I'll write how many pages it is, then stick it in the book. Now when I pick the book up, I just move it that many pages forward and put it in, and then I can see I have that f far to go. And I just stay there until I finish it. Or if I get interrupted, I can uh, pick it up later and continue to read. Now, if you lose this paper, don't despair, because we've made it into an app. So if you, if you go on your iPhone or your Android, it's on both platforms now, you can go to, to the App Store to Be a Sage. You look on Be a Sage, you'll get a free app. It's free, free for the whole, free gift, free gift for everybody. <laughs> you go to the App Store, you get this free gift that we're throwing in in this whole deal here. And there you'll find that this app that does the same thing. You can uh, roll the wheel and it'll show you the book, the pages and so forth. And you can also switch there's a toggle switch at the bottom. If you don't read paper books and you read electronically, it'll tell you how many shlokas you have to do every day. And you can measure by that on your e-reader. And that way you can keep up with this. Is that all right? On a scale of 1 to 10, how all right is it? 
Ten. Ten. Okay. Ten. Eleven. <laughs> Very good. So this is recommended, and, and practically if you do this, if you get on a regular diet of, of Srimad Bhagavatam, Bhagavad Gita, Chaitanya Charitamrita, or any of the other books, you'll immediately find your spiritual health improving. Your spiritual muscles will start to come up. You'll feel happier when you wake up in the morning. You'll feel detached from things that bothered you before. People will look at you and they'll say, what happened to you? They just say, I'm on a new diet. <laughs> and this is what I do now. Now, here's another discipline I'd like to recommend to everybody. And this is the recitation of the ver verses from the Bhagavad Gita of at least one chapter a day. And if you recite Bhagavad Gita, just the, it, the Sanskrit or the English, every day, without fail, at least one chapter. And if you're in a big hurry in your life right now, it's a busy period of time for you, you can do chapter 15 or chapter 12 over and over again until you, it just, you know it by heart because those are the shortest chapters and it only takes you five minutes. And I've heard a pundit recite it in two minutes. I have the recording. Say that again. I, there's a pundit who recites it in two minutes. Twelfth chapter. Uh, of course, you know, it's nice to take your time. It's not a race. But the fact is, to the Bhagavad Gita, according to the Lagu Bhagavatamrita, Rupa Goswami says, this is the most potent book because it's directly spoken by the Supreme Personality of Godhead. If you can wrap your head around that, and then just read one, page, uh, one chapter a day, you'll, you'll find an incredible... Here we have a testimonial coming up from the Minister of Book Distribution in ISKCON, who's... Please go ahead. The most beautiful thing in the world. So if you were thinking of looking for that, you've just found it. Let's give him a round. And I didn't, I didn't even know he was coming today, so we didn't set this up. <laughs> <laughs> and also, I'm not, I'm not advocating just reading the verses and not the purports. But what I found is, uh, Bhagavad Gita, of course, is a book you want to read again and again with all the purports. But if, you, if every day you stay in tune with the verses, it will make you want to enter into the purports. Because when you hear them, you'll be walking around the day thinking about those verses. They'll be informing your intelligence how to make decisions throughout the day. You'll be observing how the different modes of nature are working and you'll be careful. And Krishna's uh, intelligence will become your intelligence. Uh, your intelligence will become Krishna's intelligence from reading the Bhagavad Gita every day. And then you'll think of certain verses, you'll think, I want to go more deeply within those particular purports and know more about it. So for those of you who, are, who would like to have a thrill in life, by taking an extra vow, and that is to chant at least one chapter of Bhagavad Gita a day. And uh, we have for you a, a Chad credit card, <laughs> which you can use anywhere. Any, in the institutional, we'll honor these here in uh, the UK. <laughs> Just take it in, slap it on the counter, and say, look, I'm a member of Chad. You give me whatever I want. <laughs> You can write your name on here with a Sharpie and the date you started. Now, this is powerful. You write the date you started and then you start doing your chapters and you'll find out after you get one day, two day, three days, you'll start feeling this, I have to finish my chapter of Bhagavad Gita. And how will that improve your life in ways you can't even imagine? In fact, there's a whole book called the Gita Mahatmya written about this, just about how the, there's uh, a miraculous things that happen when you read one chapter of Bhagavad Gita. Uh, People have, dead bodies have come alive from hearing Bhag, uh, Bhagavad Gita. So your problems will be solved. So, th so anyone uh, who wants to read, uh, who wants to join Chad, and how many other Chad members are in here besides Jadarani? Okay, so there's a few of us here. Anybody else who'd like to t 
to, to improve their life. You can get one of these credit cards afterwards. Are you a member, Chad? You can get one of these afterwards and take it up. So I've, I think we've come to the end of our, our um, time. I'm sensing. Would you like to make a comment, Sarva? Sarva Mangala? Yes, you can uh, renew your mem membership. And also, if you miss a day or something like that along the line, um, we don't have a collection agency or anything <laughs> like that. <laughs> but just, it's to, it's to keep yourself on this regular diet. And these are very basic diet, uh, dietary um, suggestions. Every day, a certain number of pages, and every day, at least one chapter of Bhagavad Gita. If you do that, you'll move to the next level in your spiritual life, guaranteed. Spiritual health, guaranteed. Coming your way. Over to De Devesh. Hare Krishna. Awesome. <laughs> So in that uh, chapter, <coughs> Prabhuji has explained uh, uh, in uh, So in that uh, chapter, uh, Prabhuji has explained uh, that how um, one of the laws of the book's distribution is to have, uh, the first law is to have a strong sadhana. And, and reading Srila Prabhupada definitely contributes to having a very, very strong sadhana. Um, another exam, I mean, amongst Srila Prabhupada disciples, we have Bhagavad Ashraya Prabhu, Prabhuji here, and Mataji is here. Then we have Karthik Chand Prabhu, who's just sitting here, who's, who, who I consider to be, a, a, you know, a, a very uh, advanced devotee as far as reading of Srimad Bhagavatam is concerned. So we, we, we always get the opportunity to hear from him. So I'm going to now pass it over to Bhagavat Ashraya Prabhu and, and, and uh, as he would like to speak a little bit about this book, um, which is right there, Our Family Business. It, it is a book which just doesn't recommend all about distribution of book. Yes, that's the main part, but it's also about how we can improve our sadhana and many other things with that. So I'm going to just pass it over to uh, Bhagavat Ashraya Prabhu. Thank you. I, I didn't expect to have to do this, but I'm very happy to be doing it. Thank you. Thank you. In with Vaisheshika Prabhu, because uh, Vaisheshika Prabhu has been a devotee now for 45, 46 years. Yes? I don't know. <laughs> And he's been engaged in the reading of and the distribution of Srila Prabhupada's books through that entire time. And uh, as you can see, he's a very happy and enthusiastic devotee. And he, uh, he has such a deep taste for these things that he's actually creating uh, a disease in this gun. Uh, there's a saying, uh, there, there was a saying about the Japanese between 1965 and 1985, they took their manufactured goods from rubbish to excellence. And the saying was, if you, it, they created the disease of excellence in the world. And if you didn't catch that disease, then you were out of business. So, I haven't been around that many years, uh, a few less, and I've seen 
how book distribution uh, has been in many ways marginalized out of the activities, practically speaking, of the temples and our society in general. But Vaisheshya Prabhu has produced this book, Our Family Business. And it's such a beautiful title because Srila Prabhupada meant it's going to be a family. No matter what ashram you're in, you're a member of a very, very vast now international family. And, but then we have our business. Every family has to subsist on something. And the business of ISKCON was always, from Srila Prabhupada's point of view, the distribution of his books. And as we can see uh, with Vaisheshika Prabhu, it's not just the distribution of our books, it's the intense and deep study of Srila Prabhupada's books. And what you're seeing here uh, in, in, the, in the person of Vaisheshika Prabhu is is the fruit of 45, 46 years of this activity. And uh, it's a very simple principle, as he shows us. Little drops of water wear away the stone. And uh, I personally uh, uh, have uh, a great debt of gratitude to Vaisheshya Prabhu to have produced this book at this time in his life, because He's a, he's a mature disciple of Srila Prabhupada in every way and a very shining example of what happens if you just stick to the process. Stick to the process, come what may, and there's been a lot come and go in 45 years of ISKCON. But he's now presented a book uh, which is like a Shastra. It's like a Shastra. Because it's not just about book distribution. It's about, it's about being a devotee. It's about being a dedicated follower. It's about being honest and truthful and, and devoted. And therefore, it's a book of great wisdom. There's a saying, data is not information. Information is not knowledge. And knowledge is not wisdom. But if you read this book, it's got everything. It's got data. It's got information, it's got knowledge, and finally, it's got wisdom. And it's a very simple principle of wisdom that if we stick closely to what is in Srila Prabhupada's books, and we mold our lives, as Prabhupada said, gradually mold your life so that you are always thinking of Krishna. And if we can do that as individuals and, and as a society, another principle Vaisheshika Prabhu talks about in this book is the overflow principle. And if we stick to this, if we stick to what he's outlining with us today, then gradually our own hearts will overflood, as a group we'll overflood, and we will want nothing else but to give this knowledge and this, these books to the rest of the world. So for, uh, for, my, own, for my own experience, this, this is one of the most important books to ever be produced by any one of Srila Prabhupada's disciples. I would actually put this, I would put this up there as number one because it goes, it goes to the heart. The great art of distributing Srila Prabhupada's books books are the basis and if we don't have a basis in these books and if this world doesn't get a basis in these books uh, this world is doomed so I want to offer a, a great uh, vote of thanks to my very dear friend Vaisheshya Kaprabhu and, and, and anyone who hasn't got this book please buy it tonight take it home and read it and talk to each other about what you read in this book and pick up the practices and principles that are there and we'll have a very ecstatic situation. Thank you very much. Oh. But today we have a special prize. Uh, the reason we have a special prize is that Vaishnashika Prabhu doesn't uh, come here that often. 
and and now that we have the privilege of having the author with the book is as a real blessing so uh, giriraj kripa prabhu and apna prabhu would be at the table uh, handing out the books uh, we have some yellow posted notes uh, if you could just write down your names and uh, come to prabhu prabhu will be happy to write uh, sign those books uh, for all of you so as i said it's a special prize and and please do walk away each one of you with this book because you're not just walking with a book you're walking with an empire of uh, iskon as, as prabhu ji just stated thank you i just want to say one last thing uh, as vaishesh prabhu was saying at the beginning tonight this is a miracle it's a miracle that he's here now it wasn't planned or in any way organized until very recently and i've been trying to get him to come here for 8 years and now he's here so my point to all of you is please take this encounter very seriously and make arrangements so that we can bring vaishesh you could back here on an annual basis so that he's not just talking to like 30 40 50 people he's talking to 300 and 3000 people about this Hai bol hai bol hai bol Please come take books and then please come take prasadam <laughs> No Whoever is to oh, Hari Bo Hari Bo Nitai Gora Hari 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 Whoever is taking the booklet that was in book take the yeah, yeah, yeah. Nachari Ar Marman Nachari Ar Marman Nachari Ar Marman Nachari Ar Marman Hey Nachari Ar Marman Nachari Ar Marman Nachari Ar Marman Nachari Ar Marman